Hi everyone. Well, today I am with Dushant Savadia, who is the founder of the Amber Connect Group, and I have the honor of interviewing him tonight. So, how are you? Very well, and you? I'm well, thanks. Ah, oh, you have an accent, so we have extra things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to just wave to everyone and say hello? Hi, my name is Dushant Savadia, and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Amber Group. Okay, so. I have a few questions that uh, I thought would be interesting to find out about you. Um, could you tell me a little bit of history about you and how you got to where you are now? Briefly though. <laughs> uh, very briefly, I was born in India and I became a drug addict alcoholic at the age of 17 okay. and kicked out of the house at the age of 19 or in fact I became an alcoholic at the age of 14 and kicked out of the house at the age of 19. And then I started my career as a waiter in a restaurant, worked my way up, uh, worked for several large corporates around the world. Uh, I came to the United Kingdom in 2001, when I was 24, um, and I lived there for a long time, worked for some major corporates, but more importantly, I became a humanitarian through the Art of Living Foundation and served the Art of Living Foundation teaching Art of Living workshops uh, in prisons, in inner cities, corporates, and that's what brought me to Jamaica in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I made Jamaica my home for the last seven years. And uh, 2015, I started uh, the first company inside Amber Group. And uh, since then, it's been fantastic. Okay, well, then I want to unpack mm -hmm. two questions there uh, from what you just told me. Um, Amber Group, do you want to just briefly tell me about Amber Group? Yeah, Amber Group have nearly six subsidiary companies. One is Amber Connect, which is a flagship uh, vehicle tracking, fleet management, insurance, telematics uh, product, um, and uh, amazing piece of software. We put a little hardware in your car, and people are used to in South Africa anyway what vehicle tracking does, but we are kind of a light year ahead of what is experienced in the industry so far. Um, that got us a roaring success all across the world. We currently operate in over 23 countries in the world. Um, from there came Kuya Technologies, which is my software company. We host over 100 software developers in-house, which produce some amazing software for banks and large companies. Whatever they want their needs would be there, that they couldn't find the right people to build it in the shortest space of time and with the best tech. Um, that's what we do. Um, then we built uh, <clears throat> Amber Fuels, which is um, a software again with a dedicated hardware and an app for consumers. So I wanted to change that fuel experience at gas stations. Imagine you drive into a gas station, it's full and you can't get in, or you get in and you fill and you have to wait and go inside and swipe the car and do all of those things. So I wanted to create a consumer experience where customers can simply drive in fill gas and leave and the car is charged. Okay. Um, so I wanted to build something around giving consumers more experience, a better experience at gas stations, getting their own invoices, getting rewards for filling gas in a gas station. So Amber Fuels was next and then we started uh, Amber Aura, which is a smart buildings product that we built, making a hundred year old building very intelligent oh, okay. um, in, in terms of management of the air, energy and so on of the entire building. Then I'm recently going into Amber Aviation, which is bringing micro light experiences to youngsters who want to train and become pilots and for tourism experiences also. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've, we, we've been uh, rolling out quite a lot of stuff back to back. Wow, okay, so going back to your story. What was, when was, can you just tell me a little bit about when you hit rock bottom and you decided that you were going to change your life around? Because I mean, your story is amazing. And I'm sure somebody watching this right now uh, would be able to relate on it if they at that their lowest point. I think I hit my rock bottom three times in my life. Rock bottom number one, when I was 19, I was born in a very wealthy family, okay. great comforts, cars, money. And, um, when I was thrown out of the house and I was in Delhi, in India, I had absolutely no money. I had to go restaurant to restaurant to find out who will give me a waiter's job and give me food to eat. Okay. Um, that was my first odd bottom I had to hit. The second odd bottom was when I divorced uh, in 2011. Um, again, I had a choice to leave everything or ask for half, okay. as you would normally do, but I chose to leave everything and give my ex-wife everything that... 
uh, we both worked for, but I could imagine the sensitivity of it that she would be more afraid okay. um, com coming out of relationship about her uh, uh, security and, and convenience for the rest of her life. So I just decided, okay, you keep everything, I'll walk out with a suitcase. So that was my second uh, time when I was like back to square one just with a suitcase with clothes and nothing else, no money at all. And uh, of course, I, I was an art of living volunteer at the time, so I started moving around, teaching courses of the art of living. So the foundation took care of me in terms of paying me enough stipend to live. And then 2015 early was my third and the final uh, rock bottom. Um, of course, I'm a humanitarian, so what we used to do is all the money that we collected through the art of living workshops we taught in Jamaica, um, all of that was spent back for various social projects. And obviously a charitable institution cannot run without funding. Um, and the requirement of funding was way more than what we could earn. And obviously we hit another rock bottom again. And that is when I decided, okay, enough is enough. Let me build some companies which can actually donate a significant proportion of its profits back to the charitable work that I'm so passionate about. And that was the birth of the first company of Amber Group. Oh, wow. Well, from judging what you say, you're obviously a brilliant person that can make things happen. But when was your first big break? I'm not talking about the waiter jobs, but when was your first big break? I would say my first big break was out of living, not as a job, but, but to turn around as a human being. Okay. Uh, one workshop of three days, learning how to breathe pro properly, the breathing exercises, the meditation, the yoga, and understanding my own self, understanding my emotions, understanding how to handle negative emotions and conflicts around me. I think that was the turning point of my life. Um, that is what changed my mind um, to really see through people, see through situations, see through myself. Um, and I would say that gave me enough clarity in my conscience, gave me enough confidence in my consciousness uh, and gave me enough spirit to go look for something bigger and, and achieve the greatest. So, I mean, from that one hour of living workshop, it has all been like a straight up uh, it's look. <clears throat> um, situations, losses, impacts in life are going to come. I can't avoid it. I'm not saying this, this would be my last, uh, um, you know, um, uh, milestone that, that, that is. It, it could be many more. I might, I'm still undergoing some challenges which I heard yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, well, the day before I was not pleased with, but, but this is life, things yeah. are going to happen. Things are going to happen. The ability of yours to, a, to handle all those situations with a smile and rise above them and know that there is something greater around us which always takes care of us and believing in that and just, just moving along and, and just seeing the whole life as a movie. Some, something is passing through in front of your screen, you don't get stuck in that. You just keep moving, knowing that ev everything, every frame in the movie keeps ch changing. Right? So life is like that and that's what I believe. Your biggest accomplishment to date? Whew, the ability to smile, no matter what. <laughs> okay, and um, you said that you left home. How did that pan out like with your family? Are you in contact? Yes, of course. You okay. know, when I did, took the Art of Living workshop three, yeah. four years later, I did get in touch with them. And in fact, my dad takes greatest of pride in throwing me out now. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I take greatest of pride in my dad to have thrown me out too. <laughs> uh, what is your uh, biggest strength or your personal strength? If you had to describe your, your, your biggest strength to somebody, what would that be? I think my biggest strength is to motivate. My biggest strength is to not to motivate really, but to be a role model. Absolutely. And then going on, following from that story, you took the words right out of my, right out of my mouth, but um, being an inspiration, have you met anybody who you inspire that you are incredibly proud of? I think I, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, there will be people who can talk about that. I have to stay modest and not <laughs> say it. So. But you can say it now because this is about you. <laughs> I'm sure there, there are lots and lots of people I've touched Personally, I've touched lives of more than 300,000 people, okay. uh, teaching the art of living workshops, teaching them value of life and giving them the right frame of mind to, to grow in life and be successful. So yes, I mean, I've been an inspiration, I've been a pub 
public speaker for almost 15 years, 18 years. And uh, obviously, I think with Amber Group now, I'm sure my contributions are only going to increase. Okay, and then you sound like you're very well traveled. So, which was the most beautiful city and why that you visited? I don't know. I think to me, every city is home. Um, I come to Durban. I so love this place. I go to Jamaica. I love that place. I'm in India, I'm in Russia, I'm in Canada, US. I feel I have, I think somehow I connect with every city. I somehow I connect with every country. I feel I'm part of it already. So I don't have that, that thing of, oh my God, I'm in a new city. Yeah. Um, I think the world seems a very familiar place to me. And where's your base? Jamaica. Jamaica. Right. My home is Jamaica, oh, very wow. proudly. And, and what's the most interesting thing about Jamaica? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then also, um, going back to me having an addictive personality type, um, this is going to round up now, but if somebody's watching this right now, I'm sure, I mean, I've, I personally in my life, I hit rock bottom, I, I've, you know, I conquered depression, it's not something that I've kept quiet about, and I, I realized <laughs> that the moment I started talking about it, that's when I started to heal. So somebody who is not doing very well now and who is at that bottom stage of that addictive personality, what advice would you be able to give them? I would say go take the Art of Living workshop. It really helps no matter what, whether you're suffering from unemployment, whether you're suffering some addictions, whether you're suffering some traumas, whether you're suffering some bad relationships, whatever it is, meditation has a huge impact on your mind. It has such a beautiful way to put together and reconstruct your ability to deal with life. Okay. Um, and I've, I would also say that, you know, in life, always look back with gratitude. Absolutely. Um, we may look at the past as ups and downs, but the past has only made us better than what we were before. Absolutely. So whatever has happened, look back with gratitude that all that happened for a right reason. Mm -hmm. It made you into the being you are now. Then look up with confidence. There's so much ahead of us. And look forward with hope Absolutely. that things are going to come. If, if we say that uh, good times don't stay uh, along, then bad times also don't stay for long. It's only your determination to say, yes, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to smile, and I'm going to work through the situation come what me. And that is what sails us across. Well, I, I didn't expect this uh, conversation to be as powerful as it, it was, but it was amazing talking to you. But whatever you just said also just reiterates something that, that I teach my children that, you know, we've got two hands and in this lifetime you put them together and you give. Sure. And um, I mean, I'm, I've only met you for a few minutes now and it's been extremely powerful and inspirational. So continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. And uh, I hope to be in contact soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> and good luck everyone there. Bye guys.